Alright guys, Touchcrime here back again today, hope you're enjoying your Thursday so far and today we have a number of topics to discuss, the main one being domination, will it be removed from the competitive rotation? A rumour has come out that there's been a meeting with the CDL and the professional players as to whether domination should continue as the third mode for the CDL later this year. We'll talk about exactly why this is in a consideration, what options the CDL might have going forwards in terms of other modes that could potentially come into play, what could they potentially do and some other things as well. So like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, quick comment on the Pristini Chicago situation. There's been some talk again, like why have we not got a confirmation for this move yet? General is still scrimming with the Huntsman. They seem to be doing kind of well. It's only a week and a bit now, so today is Thursday. The um, the Seattle Home Series, which Chicago are playing at, kicks off next Friday. So with all that in consideration, why aren't they making the move already and getting him ready and getting some practice and some scrims in with Pristini ahead of next weekend? even if it hasn't been officially confirmed by the league yet or whatever the rumour has it. So with all that being said, who knows exactly what's happening. Credit CDL Intel says, heard bits and pieces, but not enough to say confidently it's for sure happening. Then again, though, yesterday, um, Bristini was spotted playing Warzone with formal RCTs and Scump. So with that in consideration, like it's pretty rare, I think, that we see instances of this just being bait. Of course, I guess it, you could argue it makes sense in playing with his brother and whatnot. But then again, this seems almost too indicative right but you guys can make your minds up in the comment section below so let's move on to this domination question all relevant links in the comment section below sources earlier today the cdl held a meeting with pro players to discuss if domination should be removed as a game mode outcome of the meeting is unknown personally i don't see them changing it so far into the season but we will see at least they are open to discussing it so very interesting potential. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, actively realise that Domination is not the best game mode in this game right now. I myself, the series might be 2-0, 0-2, Domination could be a crucial decider, but I will tend to just check out for at least the first six or seven minutes, maybe see what the score is at half time, see who's starting on good side for the second side, maybe watch a minute or so, then tune out for another couple of minutes and then see, come back at the end of the game to see who ends up winning. At which point, usually the game is now mathematically impossible, right? Which, of course, a bit of an issue with domination. There's a number of issues with it. The main one being, I suppose, the spawns. But at the same time, you could say that it's kind of frustrating when the game is mathematically over, but we still have to play out like two minutes of gameplay for no reason. Nobody enjoys it. Everyone just starts stat whoring, basically. So not ideal by any means. But the real issue with domination, I suppose, is the spawns in the game right now and how broken they are at times. There's a few maps we play on, like some Petro. There's some dodgy spawns, Gunrunner, some... Sometimes people will spawn at the sea flag where really they shouldn't be. But I think it's Hackney Yard where it's really criminal some of the spawns we see on that map. So the good side is when you spawn on A because you can hold A flag and B flag kind of comfortably and if the guys that are holding C ever get control of B and push up your lads at A will quite often spawn right next to the C flag do a complete spawn flip and then you can effectively just pinch on the enemy team by no fault of theirs right which is just um yeah that spawn over at the C flag is brutal happens so often when you're on bad side it makes it so so difficult because even if you do get a good number of kills over at the B flag all you have to do is push up a little bit throughout mid to try and get control of A and they'll spawn out at C and often they'll just completely surround you and actually just decimate you by you making a good play. So Hackney Yard, a lot of the time this will happen and it will really be frustrating for teams that there's not much you can do about it, right? The game should not operate like that. There should be no way that it's that easy to spawn people out, especially in most circumstances. And um, just because you happen to push up the map a little bit too far. But a lot of the times on Hackney Yard, the, the kills and the, um, well, the, the spawns will be determined by line of sights, not necessarily where players' uh, dots are on the map, which can mean that people don't spawn in places just because someone is vaguely looking in that direction, which can cause some issues. So, yes, the spawns aren't great. Fans, I don't think, uh, like watching it particularly. It's frustrating from a, from a fan standpoint who actually, like, understands the game to some degree as well because a lot of the time teams are losing and they really shouldn't be. And it's also very difficult to be a very, very solid domination team as well. So I thought this was relevant that I saw the other day. This is domination percentage win over the course of the season. Atlanta, Chicago actually have very good records. New York and LAG really don't. But apart from that, most teams are around neutral. Really with the exception of Atlanta, most of these results you could look at and say, look, domination a lot of the time is just a coin flip. And um, yeah, it, it's tough to say either way. Tough to say who really is a good domination team. Apart from, I guess, you could argue Atlanta and Chicago. So maybe these statistics, especially given how little domination is played, 
compared to some of the other modes, you could certainly argue that Domination has less of a skill gap than a lot of the other game modes, which I definitely think it is true to some extent. So, okay, that's the decision that's potentially being made. The players, I'm sure, don't like Domination because they think it's got a low skill gap and also the spawns are pretty bad on the majority of maps. I don't think the fans really like Domination because it's not particularly enjoyable to watch and a lot of people just tune out for it, to be honest, even if uh, the viewership definitely drops, let's just put it that way. So with that being considered, what are the options here for taking Domination out? What other game mode could potentially come in in its place? Because of course we're going to stick to best of five series, hardpoint search and destroy, question mark, hardpoint search and destroy. So in previous games, you know, we've had Uplink, we've had Capture the Flag. Uplink, of course, not in this game, but some pros have been talking about lately how much they would like that to come back. And to be honest, it could even come back for a boots on the ground game where, you know, the portal was just above the ground, so you still had to jump with the ball in your hands to get into it, but you could throw it from a distance. Something like that would be kind of cool. It was a lot of fun back in the day. CTF, of course, was the discussion that we had earlier on in the season, but the uh, the pros also did meet on that and decided that Domination was a better game mode than Capture the Flag. And honestly, I don't think CTF would work very well in this game, given how deep the map so It'd be so easy, and especially in 5v5, it'd be so easy to just have to someone like camping all the way in the back all the time. That would be the, the dominant play on a lot of the maps. I don't think CTF would work. You could run through a door, close it behind you, keep running. I don't like the idea of CTF. I don't think that's ever going to happen at mid-season. They might have done that at the start of the season, but several months into the game, if they're going to swap out Domination for a pretty much untested game mode capture the flag on a lot of maps, I just don't see that being the case at all, in my opinion. Which leaves the opportunity of, we either have Domination that would like, stay in the modes, or we bring Hardpoint in as a third mode. We go Hardpoint Search, Hardpoint, Hardpoint Search, I guess. Um, and that is what some people have been considering. I am not really a fan of this to be honest it would mean like how many hardpoint maps do we even have like five so both teams would veto one and then every other map would be played in the series i think this would maybe be a more enjoyable thing to watch but i don't really like it in theory maybe though it would increase the skill gap i suppose you could argue i'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on that i think it would probably make the game more entertaining to watch but i don't really like it in theory i like having that third kind of swing mode and in future seasons i imagine we will go back to having a, a verified third mode however if they do get rid of domination I think bringing Hardpoint in as the third mode and, and the fourth mode and the first mode is probably the best thing to do. Then again, I'm sure not all teams would be happy with this though, because if you're a Toronto and you have a kind of bad hardpoint record, but you're pretty much coin flipping in domination, you're probably pretty happy to have domination in the mode, right? To give yourself a chance to win a coin flip, I suppose a lot of people would argue, against one of the very best teams in the game. So there's all sorts of things for consideration here. I doubt there will be a professional consensus on this, and I think it'll be difficult to make this decision so late into the season at this point. But if there was going to make a change, I do think the hardpoint as the third mode is probably the the way to go even though I don't really like it in theory then again I don't like domination either and um, yeah, a lot of people are saying this game isn't so good right and as uh, Karma tweeted out yesterday this game is so goddamn bad never got orange things on my screen these are these icons on the left hand side for the first two months now I can't even play a free fall with bots without lagging I don't really experience this so um, I'm intrigued to hear your experience of this in the comment section below but a couple of other things just before we finish off the video here then today wanted to mention this from Parasite there's the challenges cup number three three this weekend in advance of the Seattle Home Series next weekend and Parasite is going to be playing with Zinx, Gorgo Knight and Sensor. So Doug Sensor Martin, um, Doug is eligible, he said so, so I don't know. Um, yeah, apparently Doug is going to be playing in this weekend's Challengers Cup, so that's the thing to keep your eyes on. Just wanted to mention this as well, the podcast came out last night from Nameless, it'll go up on YouTube sometime soon, so I should be able to um, catch that and maybe if there's other interesting things to discuss within it. Of course, Pac-Man recently dropped from Opta Gaming, so I'm sure there are some interesting tidbits but this was an interesting one as well when Nameless talked about how he was almost the general manager for the Optic Gaming squad which of course Mudog is now in that role um so uh, this is a story that nobody ever heard I actually uh was I accepted the deal that Optic had offered me before the season started to be their general manager and I accepted it but I hadn't signed anything yet and I, I called up uh you know the talent people um and uh they were like, yo, man, I know you want to be talented, so, et cetera, et cetera. This is what we'll do for you. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I was out, I, so I had to call Optic back. And I was like, yo, guys, I hope this doesn't ruin our relationship. You know, down the line, I'd love to work with you guys in the future. But I have to, <clears throat> I accept it. I have to decline it now. So I, 
So, uh, that's just a funny story that I never told the... the... So that could have been a very different story, right? We saw Pac-Man go onto this Hopter Gaming team as their head coach, him formally being on the desk last season. Clearly, the desk wanted Nameless back, or the CDL wanted Nameless back as well. And they, you know, he made the decision to go back to the uh, to the CDL rather than be their general manager for the Optic Gaming Los Angeles squad. But then again, you could say that, well, there's a lot of players and potential uh, analysts and people on the desk that some CDL teams are trying to poach, right? So I wonder how that could have changed the complexion of the season, whether Nameless would have had a different vision for how the squad could be organized, because he has some pretty strong opinions on these podcasts, right? So I'm intrigued to see how that would go, but I like him on the desk as well. So I prefer him to stay there for the time being, because entertainment is good for the fans' perspective. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. As always, I would greatly appreciate it. Leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.